Yo, how's it going everyone? Colby Cheese here, bringing you another champion tutorial. Today we're going to be playing some Jungle Stuani. She's a great support jungler with amazing disruption and a perfect choice for teams in need of a strong engage. So let me show you why. In this game here, we've got a team fight about to start. As I find an enemy Evelyn, my ultimate is up, so I toss it out, catching three of the enemy team, and a massive AoE damage comes in, and we're going to be able to easily clean this up. So Juwani is amazing at starting these engages and really allowing your team to catch up and turn things around massively. After that, we pretty much go on to win the game. Now in this game, for some reason, there's a fed Sona in mid. I'm going to run up behind, do my best to help him out to pick up the kill here. And we're able to take her down. But in comes the enemy, Lee Sin, from behind. And I'm going to do what I do best as Sejuani, which is keep a slow on him constantly. And there's just no way he's going to be able to get out of this. As I jump right over the wall with my Arctic Assault, he is knocked up and slowed. Once again, not able to actually do anything. Throwing out my ultimate, locking him into place as a rumble comes in from top lane. And again, he's knocked up with my Arctic Assault and he's able to go down and gives our mid laner an ability to get away. Now, that said, Mantheon is around, so he drops in from the sky and takes him out. But hey, you can't win everything. Two for one trade is okay in my book. All right, so let's take a look at her abilities. Q is her Arctic Assault. It is a short dash. It does feel extremely satisfying when you land this, and it has a nice knockup attached with it as well, and a strong percentage-based uh, damage off of their max health. I do max Q last, it's more of my utility, and the other ability is a little bit better. So, Flail of the Northern Wind, you're going to be maxing first, it's her W. Whenever you activate it, your next auto attack is going to apply a nice little burst damage to everything around you, as well as a 4 second point blank AoE around you on top of that. Now, once you hit that, you're going to usually turn on your Permafrost, which is your E, I'll max that one second, and... It's uh, every time you auto attack or use any ability, you apply a frost debuff to the enemy, which once you use Prama Frost, it will slow them. And it has a pretty damn good range, in fact. So if you attack someone and they flash over a wall, you can still hit your E and you will slow them down, usually giving you a chance to catch up and take them down. And this is really what makes Sejuani awesome in these prolonged engages, being able to just slow down so many people around her with that permafrost, in addition to having her flow the northern wind, swinging around her head and attacking everyone. Now, finally, you've got Glacial Prison. This is her ultimate, and it's so awesome. Now, on her remake, they did nerf the ultimate just a little bit, but make the rest of her stronger. Overall, she is better now. At this point, her ultimate is basically like a short range ash arrow. It works essentially in the same way. You toss it out, and it does have good range. It's going to hit uh, the, you know, whatever target it hits, it's going to freeze them in ice, as well as anyone around them. Actually, that makes it a little bit better than ash arrow, since you can freeze and stun an entire enemy team. Um, however, if you do miss them, it'll hit the ground and it'll slow everyone. So, really awesome ability just to start on engages. It does have pretty big cooldown, so it's going to feel very nice when you land it. Otherwise, you'll be quite frustrated if you don't get this one off. So, very high reward with a little bit of a risk on missing that. Alright, so her items can vary, but only a little bit. The idea with Sejuani is that she's a slow disruption support tank. So the idea is to build her masteries and items around cooldown reduction in order to make her much more effective in those prolonged engages. So what you're gonna do is you're going to be picking up a Spirit, Boots 5, Reverie, and then a Sunfire. Maybe if the game goes long enough, you'll have like a Leandres or something like that. Other than that, just lots of wards so you can have that great map control. So the Spirit of the Ancient Golem, I'll actually get that one after I go for a Sunfire Cape or a Reverie. So I'll just take, you know, kind of the core setup. And generally, I do my Reverie first. And um, that is because I do like that extra health and cooldown reduction. But sometimes, if I'm a little bit ahead, um, then I'll go ahead and go for the Sunfire first. Now, if I really need the Tenacity, I'll go ahead and finish that Spirit of the Ancient Golem. But uh, a lot of times, I don't even get my boots, in fact, until after I've got like two core items. And that's because she has so much nice uh, mobility on her Arctic Assault 
as well as the slows and the ability to shoot out your ultimate that you can sometimes skip getting those boots but since she is a jungler it is nice to have those boots 5 built up so that you can get some really nice ganks going. Now um, as far as what to build first, Sunfire or Reverie, that also does depend. If your team needs that extra go go go, then go ahead and pick up your actual Reverie as your first item. Otherwise, if um, sometimes if I'm ahead, I'll go for the Sunfire first, or if they just have a lot of AD damage and I want to be a really high threat, that'll help you out to do that. So um, as far as the Leandres, that's just kind of like a nice extra item. If you're doing well, you can pick that up. And in fact, out of the last 10 games, I've only picked it up once just because uh, a lot of times the game is going to be over by the time you get enough money to pick up that many items. So anyways, um, after that, you really just want to have a lot of wards. I'll go for a Oracles in order to get the map control later on during Baron fights and stuff like that. And that's kind of the one you want to go for. Maybe get a Sight Stone if the game was really that long. But honestly, uh, I mean, it wouldn't be a terrible idea in some situations. I just never picked it up myself. Now, while it might be kind of funny to do straight up AP items or some crap like that, that's really not your role. One of the most important parts as a jungler is getting that early lead and helping your lanes get fed. As a support jungler, you're not going to be carrying the game yourself, but you can get your lanes fed to the point to where you're going to make a huge impact on how the game turns out. Okay, real quick, let's look at runes and masteries. Not until we trampled our foes to dust. Uh, okay. <laughs> this may be a little bit different than some other people play Sejuani, but I like to go for 0921 masteries, and this gives me the extra move speed and cooldown reduction, as well as a little bit of regen, all that good stuff that you get from that support tree. For my runes, I'll once again pick up move speed on the quintessences, do your standard magic resist and armor for your defensive setup and a little bit of magic pin to help you get off the rest of your damage. Early game and ganking are quite important on Sejuani, so let's go ahead and take a look at a few clips. I do get spotted by a ward in this bush when we take it out, however I'm going to keep on pushing forward as I think we can pick up a kill here. We get Ash pushed into the wall and a nice knock up plus the slow allows me to get the first blood. I almost died at this turret because of a nice stun that is given to me, but overall we get out. Now in this particular case, I'm going to come around from the backside, and this is a nice little lane gank situation, but from the opposite side. And if you come around like that, I can throw out my ultimate. This is probably only recommended if you have your ultimate, but tower diving on Sejuani works out fairly well. In this case, I'm actually sitting inside the bush waiting for the top laner to get back. He has no idea I'm there. I was just waiting uh, for a little bit because I knew that he would be getting back to lane and probably check the bush. Luckily enough, we have Vi come in and we might actually be able to pick up a kill on her. So I'm going to slow her down using my little Arctic Assault to get a knock up onto her. And we keep on going in with Nasus and my slow. She really can't move that fast. Now we are diving this and this generally could be a pretty bad situation, especially if she had an ignite right there. However, we are able to make it work and we get out with two kills overall. Okay, here's another one. I'm going to be coming back up on this Pantheon. One thing to note whenever you are ganking, hold on to your Arctic Assault until they flash or dash ability away. You notice there, I used it. Go in there, knock him up, and we're able to pick up the kill. If I'd used my dash right away, it would be very difficult for me to stick to him. And this is the final one I'm going to talk about here. We're doing a lane gank once again, and this definitely works really well. I'm going to throw it out at the turret, knock him down both of them, and stunning, we're able to jump in and get lots of damage off. Allows my team to have a chance to start on that fight and I do pick up a kill from that. So the rest of the game, mid, late game, is more about trying to catch the enemies off guard and start some nice engagements that your team can actually catch up to and clean up nicely. So uh, right here I'm going to be coming around the backside looking for a chance to hit their squishies and I get three of them locked down into position while my vein is able to do huge damage, the rest of my team Catches back up, we get a pull onto the Ash, and they are all the way destroyed, completely taken by surprise. We're gonna take down two turrets and an inhibitor. Here I see all five of the enemy team, but I'm right there face first with two of their squishies and high damage dealers. So I go ahead and start the fight. They think it's a 1v5 at first, and all five engage on me, but everyone on my side is able to catch up quickly, and we end up getting a quadra kill for our Pantheon while all at the same time we have Janna pushing up top, all because of a nice engage from that ultimate. 
Now finally we have this one here it is essentially just me running up from behind and nice mobility on Sejuani allows me to charge in and catch two of them giving us the advantage and able to push down the rest of the tower. So, so other than that, that's pretty much it guys. Sejuani, actually a really fun champion to play and not too darn difficult. The main uh, thing you have to know when playing Sejuani is that her ultimate is probably the hardest part and learning to land that one correctly on the right targets. It's gonna be what makes or break you as a Sejuani player. So, I like her, I'll probably keep on picking her in the jungle when I need a strong, uh, very supportive, but also very effective jungler. So let me know if you guys enjoyed this video by giving me a like and a comment down below to discuss your Sejuani builds, and I'll see you guys around for the next one. I'm Colby Cheese, peace out.